Awakening with Metta, based on the book by Bhante Mahinda. Chapter 1 A Guide to the Practice of Metta. Metta in the Pali language means loving kindness or compassionate love. It is the wish for all sentient beings to be well and happy. It is also referred to as boundless or universal love, a love that transcends all barriers such as caste, color or creed. The practice of metta helps to reduce the tendencies of anger, hatred and grudges by promoting patience, tolerance, gratitude and above all, a forgiving heart. Forgiveness is an important factor which helps in releasing emotional blockages due to grudges or remorse. When we make metta our object of meditation, we should first direct it towards ourselves until we begin to experience a sense of well-being and calmness within us. As we arouse the thoughts, be well and happy, free from anger and enmity, we should try to feel it from our hearts, synchronizing our thoughts with our feelings. Try thinking to yourself, may I be well and happy, and keep a smile in your heart. Pause for a few moments and try to feel a sense of well-being. Suffuse your whole being with this feeling of calm and peace. When you are able to do this, then you should learn to radiate loving-kindness in all directions, above, below, and all around, until your aura of calm fills the whole room. Then continue to radiate out to the whole building, to all the surrounding areas, all the neighborhood, covering the whole suburb or village, and to the whole city or township, then to the whole country, the neighboring countries and islands, covering the whole world. Alternatively, we can direct our minds and send metta to the ten directions north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, northwest, above and below. After radiating metta in all directions, you may go on to direct metta to individuals, beginning with those who are near and dear to you. But you should avoid persons with whom you are very emotionally attached. If you concentrate on those with whom you are emotionally attached, it is likely that you will not want to go on radiating to others. You will tend to arouse desire and passion instead of metta. When you are directing metta to individuals, you should try to feel their presence. And as you wish them well and happy, you should also experience a sense of well-being. Moving forwards, you may think of your mother, father, those who are alive, brothers and sisters, your spouse and other family members then your school teachers, relatives, and friends. Once you are able to radiate loving kindness to those who are near and dear to you, you should go on to those who are neutral, less well-known, or even unknown to you. This could include your neighbors or passerbys in the streets. You take up these people in your mind and then wish them to be well and happy. After you are able to radiate to those who are less well known to you, you are ready to extend metta to those who are hostile 
or unfriendly towards you. This may include people with whom you have had quarrels or misunderstandings or who are simply unfriendly. They could be within your own family circles, your relatives, colleagues at work, or friends in schools or universities. If you can truly wish for the well-being of those who are unfriendly or hostile towards you, then you have learned to break barriers and your metta will become more established. You will begin to develop a more forgiving heart which will help you to clear certain emotional blockages that have developed during your childhood or younger days in this life or even in your previous lives. When these emotional blockages have been cleared through seeking forgiveness from others, forgiving others, as well as forgiving yourself, your heart will become lighter and you will be happier and more cheerful. Metta helps to soften your heart. We become more humble and able to seek forgiveness from others. However, in order to be able to forgive others and also forgive yourself, you need to have some wisdom and understanding. Firstly, we need to understand that all those who have cheated, hurt or abused us have done so not with wisdom and understanding, but through ignorance. Secondly, we need to understand that whatever happens to us has a reason. There are certain causes and conditions. We reap what we sow. If upon reflection we realize that we do not deserve the ill treatment we receive from others as we have not done anything wrong towards them, then we have to consider that what we are experiencing in the present is the result of what we have done in the past. If not in this very lifetime, it could be in our past lives. Realizing that the pain we are going through is the result of our own unskillful actions in the past, we will begin to develop a sense of compassion for those who harm us for they do not realize that they will have to go through this pain one day. So, let us forgive them, for they know not what they do. Thirdly, in order to forgive ourselves, we must realize that all the wrong and foolish actions we have done have been performed as a result of ignorance. Now that we have the opportunity to come to the Dhamma, and to realize what is good and bad, we need to aspire to and make an effort to set ourselves on the right course, to avoid all evil, to do good and to purify our minds. We need to acknowledge our mistakes and determine from now on to walk the right path. This is how we can forgive ourselves and be released from the burden of remorse and a guilty conscience. Many health problems are related to anger and other negative emotions. The release of emotional blockages through metta and the practice of forgiveness has great therapeutic value. Metta will also help to prevent one from falling into states of depression and keep the mind healthy and happy always. In the Metta Nisangsa Sutta, the Buddha spoke of 11 benefits or advantages from the practice of Metta or loving kindness. The first three are related to our sleeping habits. One who practices Metta daily will be able to sleep well, wake up easily, and be free from nightmares or bad dream. Metta promotes the true spirit of friendship or friendliness. As such, human beings will be near and dear to you. You will be able to make friends easily. Even animals will love you, and wild animals will not harm you. 
This is how yogis who practice deep in the forest or jungle can live in harmony with wild animals. At the spiritual level, you will be protected by the gods or devas in the celestial realm. As you vibrate with the frequency of loving kindness, you will naturally be connected to those beings who are full of love and compassion. As such, you will receive the blessings, guidance and protection of great spiritual masters and teachers, including devas and bodhisattvas. Metta will also help to improve your complexion. You will become more radiant. Your mind will be more focused and you will be able to get into concentration quickly. And when your practice is well established, you will not be easily harmed by fire, poison or weapons. Furthermore, at the time of death, your mind will be peaceful and unconfused. This will lead to good birth, that is, in the higher and happier realms of existence. The formula for the practice is based on three aspects of one's well-being. In order to enjoy a true sense of well-being, firstly, we need to be free from all forms of hostility such as anger, enmity, hatred and grudges. This includes anger coming from others or from within ourselves. We often get angry with ourselves because we are not able to achieve our goals or we are not able to progress as well as others. Sometimes there can be a more subtle anger towards ourselves as a result of remorse or due to the ripening of some past karma. Secondly, our mind needs to be free from mental suffering such as fear, worries and anxieties. Thirdly, we need to be free from physical pain and suffering, from sicknesses and ill health. It is only when one is free from hostility, from mental and physical suffering, that one is able to live happily with ease and harmony. There are different variations or techniques in the practice of metta, but the underlying principle is the same. It is the sincere wish for the well-being of all sentient beings. Traditionally, the formula reads like this. May I be free from hostility, from anger, aversion, hatred and grudges. May I be free from mental suffering, from fears, worries and anxiety. May I be free from physical pain, from sickness and ill health. May I dwell with ease and happiness. Just as we have these good wishes for ourselves, so do we wish others. May others be free from hostility, from anger and enmity, hatred and grudges. May they be free from mental sufferings, from fears, worries and anxiety. May they be free from physical pain, from sickness and ill health. May all dwell with ease and happiness. We should cultivate metta or loving kindness again and again until it become a part of ourselves. The practice of metta should not be confined to sitting sessions alone. It should be applied in our daily encounters with people or situations, especially those which arouse anger or aversion in us. Whenever anger or aversion arises, just tell yourself, be well and happy. Be free from anger and enmity. May others too be well and happy. Free from anger and enmity. In the beginning, this may not seem natural, but as we develop this habit more and more, it will eventually become part of our response mechanism. 
It is good to commence the day with at least 10 to 15 minutes of metta in the morning and then in the evening before going to sleep. Metta meditation can be practiced in all the four postures. Standing, sitting, walking or moving, and lying down. Or sleeping. When loving kindness becomes part and parcel of oneself, then one does not have to think about how to radiate metta anymore. Loving kindness or compassionate love will always be present. One will always wish others well. Real metta will flow naturally when one's heart becomes truly empty, empty of greed, hatred, and delusion. This will lead to the true awakening of our hearts. Mm-hmm.